Hello and welcome to this video which is going to be about using hit points to guide where you make your audio edits. So in this particular case what we're going to be doing is looking at a drum recording and using hit points to guide where we can make our cuts. Now this is a sort of semi-automated process which just means the agony of choosing exactly where you're going to make your cuts in your audio can be reduced which is particularly useful if you have a project where it's not in time with Cubase. So often you may get recordings where people have just, in this case, uh, they were playing along with uh, a track and it wasn't in time with Cubase at the time. And while I have actually done the tempo mapping since, this technique would mean you wouldn't have to do that. So you don't have to go through the pain of getting Cubase's beats to align with what's happening in the audio. You can just make your cuts according to what's in the audio. So let's take a look first at what hit points are. So you may have noticed in Cubase, when you select an audio event, you may have seen these little dotted lines appear in the audio, and these are actually hit points. So Cubase creates these whenever you import audio. Now, sometimes they make sense. Sometimes they don't make so much sense, depending on what the audio content is. But it's, it's trying to do its best to create these hit points, which allow it to have some idea of hopefully where the rhythm is in the song but you can edit them manually so we're going to take a look at this kick drum track here uh just for reference just have a quick listen so this is just what we're listening to here it's just a remotely recorded uh drum part so let's take a look at this so if you open it up in the editor and go to the hit points tab so you can just expand this if you click edit hit points they should appear on screen and we can see they have come up and it's detecting plenty of what's happening in this particular recording. That's probably too much. If we zoom out, you can see it's pretty intense because we've got some bass drums here, but we've also got not bass drums. So it's maybe a bit of bleed off of the snare, etc. that kind of thing. We can fine tune these. So with the threshold slider, you can see we can pick the level at which they get triggered. And as we take this up, there are fewer and fewer hit points. In this particular case, it's a little under recorded. So if our threshold is too high, we get nothing. Now, as we bring this down, we're going to get most of these coming in. And then you can kind of zoom out and say, well, you know, am I doing a good job at this point? And we can see we've got most of them, but here, this particular one's not picked up, this particular one's not picked up, etc. So what we'll do is we will adjust that down. And while that works okay, what sometimes happens, so we've nearly got all of them, I think we're good now. Sometimes what happens is you get one that you may not want for whatever reason. So to make sure we're picking all of them up, we may go too far. And then you can see then some other ones come in. So Let's go and investigate what's happening over here. And we can see, for whatever reason, maybe it's a bit of bleed off the snare is adding to the bass drum sound, etc. That's getting picked up there. Now, this is often where the intensity slider comes in. So you can see, if I click the intensity slider, if you look at the bottom of the screen, look down here. As I move that, the little yellow point comes up. And as we bring the intensity up, because that's a low intensity point, it goes, which is really useful. So generally, you'll find that with a combination of the threshold and intensity, normally I do threshold first and then fine tune it with the intensity, but that's not looking too bad. We're not going to spend too long going over it, but for the certainly for the start part of the song, that's picked all of those up. So that's tuning our hit points. Now, the next thing you need to do is to decide what you're going to do with them. Now, there are actually lots of things you can do with them, but this particular case, what we're going to do is we are going to create events, which basically means what it's going to do is chop the audio event at every single hit point. Probably why you want to make sure you haven't got too many of them. But in this case, it means we're going to get every individual bass drum cut out. So I'm just going to click events there. You notice the editor goes a bit gray because it's no longer seeing an active part. And then if we now come out of there we can see they've all been cut up so it's done all of that work for you so if that's the kind of thing you need to do you can get it done really quickly with that and then you can substitute in this case maybe there'd be the odd bad bass drum and it just means it's much quicker to to move those over yeah it's probably overkill doing that in this particular case but often there will be parts where you you might have a lot of work to do or you might want to isolate individual things etc 
And this will just mean that that process is much quicker and much more consistent because if we look at these, we can see that the bass drums themselves are pretty consistent and it's cut them in a pretty uniform way. It's probably not something I would do if I didn't need to do it, but it is quite useful to have that ready and done. Now, the next question you may ask is, can I do this automatically to other tracks? And as far as I'm aware, the answer is no. So I've spent quite a while trying to find a way of transferring this across to other tracks, and there doesn't seem to be an automated way to do it. If there is, please let me know. But this is one of the areas where there, there isn't sort of the scripting capacity that is available in some other programs that would allow you to do that kind of thing. And the capacity to take hit points from one track to another doesn't allow you to do this. So we can't just take the hit points from one and move them to another and then cut them up, unfortunately. So the workaround that I use with this when I need a reference for this kind of thing is to use a silent reference track. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing again with the bass drum. But what I'm going to do is to create a reference track, which is going to be silent. So I'm just going to duplicate this track here. I'm going to call it reference. I'm going to change its color just so it's pretty apparent that it's not the same thing. So I'll just change that to that there. And then I'm going to do the same thing once I've taken out the mix. Now, the easiest way to take out the mix is to just put no bus on there. So it's got no input and no output. It's not going to play. Even if it was part of this solo group, you'll see that if it's played back, wow. Well, maybe going there if we listen to it it's not going to any bus if you want to go belt and braces you can turn the volume down as well if you're worried that at some point it's going to get reassigned but i don't think i've ever had a problem with that but anyway now you can do the same thing so fortunately our hit points are already stored so you can actually do this under here so we can do divide audio events at hit points there so there we've got all of that and now we've got a reference which we can use if we want to cut something up. We've got this. So as long as we're set to snap being on events, we can see that we can cut uh, exactly this point. Now, obviously, there are some other events in this. So in this case, it's the beginning of that particular thing is happening. But this just means if I want to cut this particular part out. So let's say you just want to take this part out. So let's just take this snare fill. Yeah, so we could just use that as our reference and then cut those. And obviously, if we were going to be intelligent, we'd just cut the folder there. And there. And then we've got this fill, which we could put somewhere else if we wanted to do that. Now, obviously, there's always challenges with doing this kind of thing where you may need to time stretch it slightly because the drummer may have drifted in tempo. You may have issues with audio where you've got the overlap and it, it may not sound totally convincing because maybe what's happening with the kit isn't uh, perfect, but those problems would be there anyway. You, this just means you've got a hit point indicated reference, which allows you to make those decisions much more easy rather than going, oh, where exactly is it? Which all adds up when you're working in a session and often means you may not make the edit that you possibly could do if it was a bit quicker. So this is something that I use reasonably regularly if I get something in where I'm not going to tempo map it and I need to do some audio editing and chop things around. But also it can have creative uses. So you can take a drum loop and chop it up on its hit points much more easily and consistently. So if you take something from Media Bay, you can do that. So here we've got a drum loop from Media Bay. So this is. Kind of a jazzy thing. And again, you can see those little dotted vertical lines because it's already detected what it wants in this. Whether or not you'd want to do those, I think that's probably be a bit much on there. So again, we're free to edit that. We can just open it up. Let's look at these hit points and maybe just just alter that i'm not sure whether we'd want that yeah maybe we'll go with that and then again we can just create some events from that so we can edit this put this uh, maybe onto there and that one's going to sound reasonable so we keep the the feel and maybe we'd want to 
put something there as well. Although obviously we'll get a bit more of a glitch from that because that will be. So we can hear that that weird edit there, which was a style. It's certainly you know the kind of thing that I quite liked when it was when it was a new thing. But you'd probably want to play around with that. But by retaining those where those hit points are, now that's possibly going to look a bit weird. Let's have a listen. Yeah, so that that was the kind of thing you're going to need a bit of uh, massaging to get that to work. And if we turn the grid off, we can possibly get that. But you could always do a bit of crossfading, etc. This is just the starting point for the kind of thing you'd want to to get it to work. So, providing we don't go to that hit, maybe if we just crossfade those, yeah, still sounds a bit weird, but. You get the idea. So by sticking to where the hit points occurred, you can keep the the feel of the part, even though you are utterly eviscerating it of its original intent. Anyway, as ever, I hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.